To conclude our discussion of a single qubit and single qubit operations, uh, let me then address uh, one interesting point. At this point, you may just ask, well, you know, fine. We can see that we have those two-level system qubits. You can perform nice unitary operations on them. In fact, we can see that you don't need uh, that many different types of unitary operations to implement any unitary operation on a qubit. Like the Hadamard and the phase gate would be enough. Even more, you can say that I can just pick up one phase gate, and with the Hadamard and this T gate, I can approximate any unitary operation with uh, precision of my choice and I don't have to work that hard to implement this gate because the number of gates in my circuit will grow only in the logarithmic fraction of the uh, logarithmic function of the of um, of the inverse of the precision so that's all fine but uh, where is the connection with computation and logic so let me give you one example which was kind of interesting because uh, in the early days uh, of quantum information science, there was lots of discussion between physicists, logicians, mathematicians, computer scientists who developed their own parochial language and they thought about uh, this field in, in their own way. So one example uh, that was, uh, I quite vividly remember discuss uh, over dinners, um, was the, uh, the notion of uh, what kind of new insights to logic this kind of mathematics on physics can give you. And uh, a wonderful example of that, I think, is the notion of the, the square root of naught. So imagine that um, I, I ask you this question. Is it possible to design a logic gate that operates on a single bit uh, so that when you apply this operation twice, so the two consecutive independent application of the same operations give you logical naught? So you may think about the circuit again this is my magic operation and another operation of the same time and I would like this to be equivalent to logical naught which is like operator x or naught so those two gates are identical is it possible to do that well you think for a moment and uh, any logician any mathematician will tell you no 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 it doesn't make sense you can just construct the truth table you can come up with um, you can represent those matrices uh, in terms of uh, positive. You, know, you can represent those operations in terms of positive matrices and uh, stochastic matrices if you want to have probabilistic gates. Whatever approach you take, essentially, the answer is no. Uh, coming from a mathematical side is, is certainly not. Now, uh, well, you know, a physicist would say, well, actually, I can probably do it because. Um, the, the square root of naught, the square root of x, so the, the, the square root of this matrix, 0, 1, 1, 0, is a unitary matrix, right? So you can, <coughs> you can really implement it, and this matrix is 1, which actually is 1 over 2, 1 plus i, 1 plus i here, 1 minus i, and 1 minus i. So that's, this is actually a pretty well-defined uh, unitary matrix, call it the square root of naught. And so that means that actually you can go to the lab and implement this kind of operation. So you can show to your, your colleague who is a, a, you know, a hardcore logician that there is a black box that operates only on a system that has two states. And, and this black box, when you apply it twice, gives you logical operation naught. So there is a, something called the square root of naught because there is a physical realization of this operation in nature. You know, it's, uh, w what it means essentially is that it's possible to construct abstract logical mathematical systems. But where physics comes in is, is sort of makes a little like a reality check. Is this mathematical model something that really tells you about what you can do in nature or not? And to create a faithful mathematical model, you have to just take into account uh, inspirations coming from physics. So, so then logicians at this point have to take the square root of naught as a valid logical operation because it does exist. You, know, you cannot just leave 
in denial saying, well, you know, I live in my abstract world. I don't care about what you can do and what you cannot do in nature. You, you have to be realistic. So if you don't want to be in denial, you have to incorporate the square root of naught into the repertoire of logical operation. And that makes the whole mathematical system much richer, much more beautiful um, and much more interesting to explore.